Hello, my name is Klaus. And my name is Carol. We are from the University College of Agrarian and Environmental Pedagogy, Vienna, Austria. And we share with you an Austrian example of a didactical concept. It's called Green Pedagogy. We will invite you to two processes of learning. Um, first, learning setting. Um, with an example about the big problem and in a uh, big problem in Austria. And uh, the second is the theory concept of the green pedagogy. Okay. All of you know the Education for Sustainable Development, ESD. This is the basis for our green pedagogy, and it was already founded in the 1980s by Gro Harlem Brundtland who was then the Prime Minister of Norway. And all of you know that future generations shall have the same resources as everyone at present, and rich people shall share the chances of development with poor people or countries. Yeah, thank you. The next. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. Um, I think all of us know the three pillars of sustainability. So they are ecology, economy and social responsibility. And in the middle, they are our values. They are the engine, the engine in our actions and the driver of change. Or someone, they are the stability factor. Um, so how can we work on value changes in favor of sustainability? Yeah, you can choose different topics because there's so much related to sustainability. Uh, you can talk about CO2 emissions from the chimneys. You can talk about um, food, food production. You can talk about biodiversity. The idea is always to collect and share thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. So the question, next one, please. Yeah. Is how to get into action based on facts, not opinions. Highly complex sustainability issues can be overwhelming. Experiencing nature does not happen by itself. Encourage, give hope, experience self-efficiency. So, get out of powerlessness. The green pedagogy maybe is an example. It's an example in our background of agriculture and environmental education. And you see here uh, the slide. When theory, then um, next slide. Okay. Yeah. Then it's a green colored headline. So um, when the green color headline comes, um, you know, you hear something about the theory of green pedagogy. So it's a mix of example and theory. Now start. Yeah. And I can tell you something about our agenda. So we'll give you an example and then we will summarize the theory and then it's your turn. What is interesting for you and for your students, which topics are important for your country? And we have an example chosen for today, which is food waste. And we have tried this with our students and it worked very well. So, for example, Klaus, we have one third of food that is wasted worldwide. And the World Health Organization estimates that in total, it's a 1.3 billion tons per year that is thrown away. And we broke it down to Austria. We researched it for our country and it was 173 kilos per Austrian per year, which adds up to 150 fully loaded articulate lorries per day. Can you imagine? No. Yeah, so we throw away a lot of things in Austria and I'm, well, I, I, I'm betting that in your country it's not a lot different. So that's why you should research with your students your own data to make it more approachable for them. For Austria, we had the result in, in detail that more of 50% of the thrown away food waste is in private households, 30% stems from agriculture, 
12% of the food waste is um, caused by restaurants and 5% in food trade. And then on the contrary, at the same time, we have the paradox on that over 850 yeah. are starving worldwide. So we have here far too much and there the people are starving in the global south, for example. And you can access this topic by production, transport, trade, et cetera, et cetera, because all of that has an environmental pro uh, impact. And then our learning teaching setting was as following. We let our students research the causes of food waste with the following question. We divided them into small groups and they collected the causes of food waste in their households and had to write down uh, three to five courses on paper, and then they presented it to the jury. Okay, and uh, do you know the answers uh, from the Austrian pupils? Uh, wh why it was um, wasted, yes. We have this in written form here. There was lack of shopping planning, for example, and then they threw it away because of the best before date that is given on the packaging, but has not to be this date then incorrect storage. So if it's meant to go into the fridge, but is stored outside, then the preservation um, yeah, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so it's back it's, to you. Yeah. It's the theory. The theory, um, please, in the first topic entry, confrontation, introduce the topic, address it if possible. Um, here is to address food waste, then collect the facts um, prior the knowledge. Introduce yourself and reconstruct. Then give an intervention. Address myths, broaden, broaden perspectives. Um, yeah, that's the first point. Uh, but now, go on with your example, Caro. Yeah, and we created a paradoxical future scenario and we said that 20% decline in turnover um, is caused if you say that there is no more food waste. So what does it mean? If you say we have no more food waste, the wonder has happened overnight, wow, then that would lead to discount battles to boost consumption or uh, we would have 10,000 employees to lose their jobs, which is affecting women in particular because they often work part-time in the food sector. Then small jobs are closing. Um, then agriculture, small farms have to close down and so on and so forth. If food is no longer wasted, we have a downside to it, which is paradoxical and not expected. And the IMN, uh, IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the warns of he warns of recession. He says if the consumption is weakened, we have a reduce of economic growth, and furthermore, a struggling global economy, and then all the consequences of this. And then the question is, how does this affect you? How does this affect the single student? Uh, and they have to stop for a moment and ask themselves, hmm, what feelings come up with me? What emotions do I feel? What thoughts come up to my mind if I hear all these paradoxical facts? Cool. So in the theory, irritation, provocation uh, come into play as interventions. They are intended to break up the status quo and enable a change of perspectives. So perhaps also a feeling of powerlessness. It is as it has always been. This requires encouragement. Mm -hmm. True. So, yeah, um, encouragement as part of intervention can also mean motivating people to take action, to come out of powerlessness. Um, yeah, so... Maybe some of these uh, these papers from uh, Pope Francis are some ideas for come out of powerlessness. But now, back to your example. Yeah, then 
we come back to our case study of food waste. So throwing away is important for the economy. Economy. This was a major output of our research in this topic, and we have always um, we always have to ensure a systematic view, a systematic approach to these important things. So why do we throw away so much? What's the subject oriented to you? And then build up your own competence to act and to make yourself um, more self-efficient or more efficacy. Uh, genau. And this is what we do we ask our students. Where in the household can you change something so that less food is thrown away? And then you present it on paper or on this Padlet, which is an online tool, and you briefly explain, but not longer than two minutes, because it should stay interesting for the other participants. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, Carol, please let me make a sidestep. Um, yes. Maybe you know Martha Nussbaum. He has uh, written a book, Creating Capability, the Human Development Approach. So uh, one of the basic questions is why teaching? Knowledge, competences don't help it if industry or policy, politics don't change the conditions. So the pedagogically responsible to learning to ride a bike, and it's an example from Martha Nussbaum, um, and finding joy, not for buying bikes and not for building cycle paths, only for have fun to ride a bike. So that's the capability. Motivation to change should be tough, not fearing changes. Okay. Um, so the construction, the interaction, the topic is thought on. The learners develop new perspectives. And uh, it's the deconstru deconstruction to criticism and to self-criticism and then we can change something. The next slide, please. Yeah. Green pedagogy theory says that the construction of new perspectives has to start now. To deconstruction of previous attitudes. Next is yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, and then a very important part to close the session is a reflection. So please ask yourself briefly, we asked the students, what do I see differently than at the beginning? Where have my um, views changed, for example? Or did I learn, did I have new approaches? Did other new questions arise in me, in my small group, in the plenary? And then at the end, please write one result of your own reflection. In this case, it was an online setting to the chat, but we did this now on paper. And then it is discussed in the plenary. Mm -hmm. So thank you. So the last point is the reflection theory. Um, what was the aim of the learning setting? What results did we achieve? Um, this phase is the starting point for new confrontations. The spiral continues. So we have not one answer. We have many answers. And, uh, it can't be alone or interactive. Um, sometimes it's better for interactive. And you see now the spiral. The spiral and every point of this spiral, we have now um, see it. Um, Carlo shows us um, how it works. First, uh, uh, there is um, the confrontation, and then there is the reconstruction, and there's a new construction, and there's interaction and deconstruction, and at the least, we have a new motivation to turn it on, to change some things and have new ideas for answers. So um, in this slides, you see the faces in, in special, um, and you can read it again. Uh, there are some uh, details more from the confrontation, the reconstruction, the intervention, and also the other phases. Uh, please, the next slide. Oops. Yeah. 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 And 
um, the last one is the reflection. All of these uh, slides uh, you have on the uh, learning platform um, nearby the MOOC, and you can um, read it uh, once again when you have seen this video. So that's it. Maybe it's a new idea for um, have some solutions for the big problems in our world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much from my side as well. And now, Carol, yeah, I have something else to finish off. Okay. Can you do anything with this combination of letters? No, I have no idea. I can't guess what it means. Okay. So the first B is brain. If you want to teach something, you also need to know something about it. H, hand. You should also master skills. H, heart. You should be inspired by it. Um, maybe the three words uh, are, um, you know them, because they come from a great reform pedagogy, from the German-speaking world, uh, from Pestalozzi. But now I would like to add to them F for feet. Go into the world with it. Don't keep your knowledge. Move forward and broaden your horizons. And the last, what is H for humor? Not everything can change. Don't despair. And, um, yeah, just take it with humor. I... Always look on the bright side of life. So maybe that's the answer. Always look on, look on the bright side of life. Yeah, it's always good to look on the bright side of life. <laughs> yes, Johnny Rock. So, okay. Goodbye. And that's Thank you for listening. Bye bye. Let's sum it up. Be creative and dare to confront your students with paradoxical and provocative examples. Start from where your students are. Find examples that are closely related to their lives. And always keep a delightful sense of humor while facing the challenges of our environment.